can't hear you. Hey, can, can you hear me? You. Yes. Okay. Okay. Uh, Heavenly Father, we want to thank you for making another day. And Lord, we want to thank you for dying on the cross and shedding your blood for all of our sins. And Lord, we just want you to touch all these people that have been affected by this virus and any all kinds of sickness. Lord, just please heal them in the, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we want to bless this nation, this great nation of ours and and in our, in our leaderships. Lord, we also want you to come down and give Pastor Carter the wisdom, the strength, and the courage to teach your word again today, Lord. And Lord, we just want to bless this online ministry as well. And we want to thank God for it. And Lord, we just want to thank you for everything that you've done for us and keep and continue to do for us. And Lord, we just want to say we love you, we praise you, we honor you, we worship you, and glorify you. In Jesus Christ, precious name. Amen. Amen. Thank Amen. you, Ryan. And we thank God for you and Tara and Jenna. And we're praying uh, for the Trozlers. Uh, Tara's father passed away. And um, we're praying for comfort for Ryan and, and, and Tara and your family. So you all can hang in there and stick with Jesus. You know, it's, a, it's, it's really good to know that uh, when our hearts are overwhelmed, we can go to the rock of our salvation. And Ryan and Tara are a witness that we have a solid rock, Jesus Christ, our solid rock. And in times of trouble, we thank God that we have a Savior whom we can turn to. I want to give a, a, an encouragement to all of you pastors out there and teachers and prophets, apostles, evangelists. And I want to give a shout-out to all of you believers who are, are from other churches, but you're coming on board today or you're listening to the recording. <laughs> These are difficult times. And so we want you all to walk together in love and to encourage one another. And, and pastors, uh, some of you are trying the online church for the first time this week. I want you to be encouraged. I want you to be encouraged. You know, when we started this ministry five years ago, Jackie and I, people laughed at us. They said, oh, that ain't no church. That's not a church. And 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 uh, and we began making YouTube videos, but you know God knows what He's doing. And as my niece Waynette Cox, she'll be on with us later on. Waynette will say, "Uncle, you're out there on the cutting edge." And Jackie's always saying, "You're out there on the cutting edge." Well, God has kept me on the cutting edge of ministry for many years, long before the online church. <clears throat> we were doing stuff that other churches were not doing, like feeding the hungry developing soup kitchens and and giving clothing to the to the needy and um uh traveling overseas to help start ministries and build churches and God has had us on the cutting edge but we give the glory and honor and praise to the Lord but in all that we do ladies and gentlemen it is not us it's it's Christ in us the hope of glory and I thank God that he's raised up people like you uh that we can work together and help one another so this is not a Lone Ranger ministry. This is not a, a Spider-Man or a Superman. No, this is a, a, a combination of God touching people, uh, uh, many whose names will never, probably never be aired over the waves. But I'm, I'm grateful to the many people who have helped me to get to where I am uh, in Christ and in this ministry. I want to give a shout out to Pastor Paul Begley, my friend, and uh, who will always be a friend of mine. Pastor Paul taught me. He gave me one-on-one -on -one mentoring in Kingston, Jamaica, about how to do the online church. And I thank God for him. I thank God for uh, Trey Ramsey from Florida, actually originally from Phoenixville, Pennsylvania, for <coughs> teaching me. And his dad, Tom Ramsey, for teaching me how to use a webcam and how to set it up and how to use the headset and how to coordinate this equipment and how to develop YouTube uh, uh, videos. So a lot of people have helped us in this ministry. And so I want to encourage you pastors who are trying this for the first time, pastors like Hal T. Best, Eternal Hope of Glory in Chester, Pennsylvania. I saw you online for the first time this morning, uh, Pastor Hal, and you're having some technical issues, and, and technical, technical issues come with the first few times. But I want to encourage the people of your congregation to be patient, and, and you all work out 
those uh, those issues. And I want to say to other uh, pastors, I saw my friend Andrew Holtz from um, Battle Creek, Michigan, called me the other day, and and he's going to start this. You see, with this coronavirus. A lot of people are isolated now, and we're on quarantines and self-quarantines, and, and they're talking about socially distancing one another. And then several clo many churches have closed down, and in order to bring the word of God to people, then the pastors are venturing into doing online ministry. And not to, not to punish pastors, but a lot of you guys who laughed at us years ago are now saying, hey, hey. Pastor Carter is on the cutting edge, and Paul Begley is on the cutting edge. So, so we want to be a help to you and an encouragement. And um, there's help for you. I want to take time out and, and share with you. And Karen and, and, and your uh, wonderful pastor, Aaron, Alan Noel, and uh, Melanie, you all have uh, many pastors whom you know and people who are trying to get that word out, well, get the word out to them. Let them know, hey, Pastor Carter has a new book. Uh, some of you have a copy. It's called The Online Church and the Great Commission. The Online Church and the Great Commission. And, for, and many of you pastors who are venturing today for the first time with online ministry, I want you to get a copy of my book, the Online Church and the Great Commission. Thanks, Karen. And Karen has uh, read this book, and she's taken our online course with this book and has implemented this and helping her pastor, uh, uh, Pastor Alan Noel, up in, in uh, Pennsylvania. And so this book, ladies and gentlemen, tells all about the online church, how we can carry out the Great Commission, but this book gets into uh, real technical stuff, uh, pastors. It shows you in a, in a, in a real easy, hands-on way how you can get the equipment, what equipment you need to reach your congregation, how to set the equipment up, how to operate it. And it's, it's an easy, hands-on book. And we go a step further. We show you the ins and outs, the do's and the don'ts. Because if you violate certain principles, YouTube will shut you down. Your uh, server will shut you down. Facebook will shut you down. It's more than just sitting in front of a camera talking to people. But there are certain things that you do. And uh, there are certain things that you do that can cut you off and shut you down. And so get a copy of this book. It costs $25. Uh, this is a commercial today. $25. Contact me. Get a copy of the Online Church and the Great Commission. Andrew Holtz from Battle Creek, Michigan, ordered his on yesterday. And many others are ordering this book. It takes you. It walks you through how to set up the online church, how to operate it, how to make sure that you record it, and how to get your recordings, there are certain ways you have to do uh, things you have to do to, to make a YouTube video and how to get people to look at the recording. And so, but if you violate certain principles, like playing somebody's music without their permission, you can't just get on the online church and play songs by James Cleveland or 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 the, the Blind Boys or 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 the Kentucky Five or you can't just play anybody's music. You can't just play Sandy Patty or anybody else without permission. And and you can't play CDs uh, without people's permission. That is why we play songs by our friend Kevin. Wilson, Kevin Wilson from London, Kentucky. We play his songs, and we play his songs, we play his songs, we play his songs. Why? Because we know Kevin Wilson, and he knows us, and he's given us permission to play his songs. And because Kevin is a friend of this ministry, and he's so kind, and he is an anointed singer, we play his songs so that we do not violate his copyright and we do not run into trouble with YouTube or with Facebook or with any other server or social media. And so there are things, pastors, you need to do. 
and church members, there are things you need to, to do. Get your, get your pastor a copy of this book, The Online Church and the Great Commission. Now, ladies and gentlemen, we know pastors, because I'm a pastor, and we know that pastors can be some very stubborn people. You know, uh, some pastors don't want you teaching them anything. So I know some pastors, they're going to struggle with this online church, and they're going to make it fit. I'm going to make this this triangular thing fit into this uh, circular hole I hear. And, and, and save yourself a lot of wear and tear, pastors, Order a copy of my book, The Online Church and the Great Commission, only $25. It'll save you a wear and tear, and you will be blessed, and your congregation will be blessed. And I want to say also to you pastors and members of the body of Christ, cooperate with one another. In these days when, when look here, people are afraid of this coronavirus, and, and churches are shut down, and and the government has issued certain mandates, and, and in some areas they are threatening martial law. They are arresting people if they are assembling in in numbers of people, and some people aren't even allowed out on the streets, and so churches are closed. We never thought we'd see the day, Ryan, when churches would have to shut down. And so God wants his people to hear the word of God, and so uh body of Christ, not just pastors, the the, the uh, burden is not just on the pastors, but on the body of Christ to fellowship with one another. It might be, ladies and gentlemen, that we have to meet in home fellowships, four or five people. The church might have to meet underground, and and but God is going to develop ways in which we can communicate with one another so that you can stay in touch with Jesus and Jesus in touch with you. So pastors, get a copy of this, the online church and the Great Commission, and at the same time, I'm going to stay on the cutting edge and see what, what the, the where what the next level is, where God's going to lead us, so that we can we want to be a blessing to you. And if it's taken five years of online church pioneering, which we've done to 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 help work out the wrinkles and set the stage for pastors to follow through, then if it takes five years to develop something else, if the Lord had given me five more years, we will develop whatever God has in plan. It's all about helping one another, ladies and gentlemen. It is not about building up this ministry. And so I want to say to you pastors and members of the body of Christ, share your facilities with one another. If you know how to do online ministry, if you know how to use video cameras and headsets and, 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 and if you're technically oriented and you know a pastor who's not technically oriented but has a desire, then why don't you take the time and show that pastor how to do that? And I'm thinking about having a workshop soon. I might just have a workshop soon on a, maybe a one Wednesday evening, a Wednesday evening workshop where we can just walk people through because there are going to be a lot of pastors, a lot of teachers, a lot of preachers coming on to learn how can I do this. And I want to say to some of you bishops who have these all numbers, hundreds of pastors under you, some of you, you know, if you want the training, we can help you with the training, and it's not about money. You know, uh, I, I hate greed. I hate greed, and it's not about money. It's about using what God has given you to help somebody else. And you say, well, Pastor, if you hate greed, then why are you charging $25 for the book? Because I pay for this book out of my personal finances. Hey, Ryan, I mean, let's be real. Keep it real, dude. I paid $25. I paid money out of my own personal finances to publish this book. I want to recoup the money that I spent on it. I'm trying to be practical, ladies and gentlemen, trying to be practical. But it's not about money. Hey, if you... If you don't have the money and you want this book, we will make sure you get a copy. All you've got to do is just give me a call or send me an email or hit me up on Facebook. Praise God. Okay. Don't compete with one another, churches. Don't compete with one another. I sent out a, a recording of our ministry 
from last week, and then someone sent me something. Well, and the person said, well, you know, you've got a lot of competition out there. A lot of churches are starting to do this. No, 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 I don't have any competition because I ain't competing. I'm just doing what the Lord says do, minister, minister. God has given me a wonderful studio, excellent equipment, and it's cost effective. I mean, when you think about how much it costs to operate this ministry, it is. it doesn't take a whole lot of money to do this kind of ministry. And so, uh, Christians, let's stop talking about money and the cost of stuff, and let's do what God says. Uh, Jesus said, go ye into all the world preaching the gospel. And now we're seeing that what we started to do five years ago, and uh, uh, what, what my, my mentor, Pat Paul Beckley, started to, to do years before that, and what others are starting to do, Mark Moyer, up in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, started last year uh, with a ministry entitled He Still Speaks, and he produces videos every week. He's not too far, maybe 75 miles from you, Karen. He's not too far from you, Ryan. Mark Moyer, check him out. He Still Speaks, and God is raising up ministries so that the people, not only of this nation, but of the nations, get the word of God. Uh, this ministry reaches out into Africa, Asia, uh, Europe, South America, and, and North America, and, and we're helping people. It's not about money, and it's not building up congregations. It's helping people to get the word out so that everybody will know that Jesus Christ is Lord, and God wants everybody saved. And so once you get saved, you need to maintain what you have. And that's why I'm so glad that many believers are on with us today. Many believers, your churches are closed down, but you can come to this place to get the word of God. And so we thank God for you. We praise God. Hey, let's get ready for uh, a, a brief word. And then um, we have prayer uh, after the word. And, and uh, after the word, if you want to stay online, we'll pray for you individually. And um, we thank God. We're going to take authority over this coronavirus thing today. Let us pray. Father God, we thank you and bless you and honor you, praise you, worship you. You are the mighty God. There is none like you. Oh, God, anoint us today. Anoint every member of the body of Christ. Fill us with your Holy Spirit. Oh, God, stretch forth your hand, as Ryan already prayed, upon our government officials and our leaders and this nation and the nations. And, Lord God, deliver the people from fear. We bind the spirit of fear in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit uh, identified as the coronavirus. We bind every power, every principality, every ruler, spirit, and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. We bind every epidemic and pandemic in the name of Jesus. We bind the spirit of fear, God, loose. You're healing upon people today. We loose the healing power of God upon the nation and the nations, and we praise you, and we thank you. Satan, the Lord, rebuke you. In the name of Jesus, we take authority over all of your power. In Jesus' name, let the church say amen, amen. Praise God. Okay, today we're going to look at a message, and in the, in the next, if you give me 20 more minutes, 20 more minutes, we're going to look at a uh, subject called, and we, we're entitling our sermon today, Don't Be Afraid. Don't be afraid. Turn to your neighbor and say, don't you be afraid. Don't be afraid. This is a message uh, not only for America, but this is a message for every nation. And I thank God for all of you, all of you who uh, are tuning in. Don't be afraid. You see, the strategy of the devil is to get people into fear, and then fear creates paralysis. And if the devil can get you and your household in fear, if he can get you and your spouse in fear, if he can get you and your church in fear, if he can get the elderly in fear, if he can get the, the community in fear, if he can quarantine a whole community and, and people can't go out to the supermarket, and if he can grip you in fear, the next thing is 
he can paralyze you, and then he can destroy you. And, and you pastors need to know this. You need to know this, so you need to stop trying to compete with one another. If there are possibilities for learning how to reach people, how to get the word of God into their homes without people having to panic and try to rush to the, to the church and the churches are closed down and people uh, uh, don't have to violate the law, if there's a way for you to reach them and there's somebody uh, like me who can help you, then use what we have, what God has given us. Use it to the praise and glory and honor of God so that we can help one another. The songwriter said, if I can help somebody as I pass along, if I can cheer somebody with a word or song, if I can tell somebody he's traveling wrong, then my living shall not be in vain. And so praise God, praise God. Jesus said, if, there, if any of you will be great, you must be a servant. So we must pray, Lord, create in me a clean heart. Give me a servant's heart. Give me a servant's attitude. Let it not be me, 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 and my, my, my. But, Lord, whatever is going to give you the glory and the honor, let me do it. Let me do it. And so don't try to build up an empire. Ladies and gentlemen, don't try to build up a ministry. Don't try to build up something for your own posterity. Don't try to build yourself up. It's all about Christ, the hope of glory. Christ Jesus. The Bible says, for I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. Yet not I, but Christ lives in me. And the life that I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God, who gave, who loved me and gave himself for me. I thank God. Melanie, that Jesus Christ died for you. He died for me. Praise God. And so we live our lives, not for ourselves, but for Christ Jesus, the hope of glory. So we want to take a look at today uh, the, the, our message, Don't Be Afraid. I believe this message is going to bless a lot of people. It's going to bless a lot of people. I believe this message is going to be right on target. I believe God is going to nail it today in the name of Jesus. Praise God. So let us turn to in our Bibles to Psalm 57. Psalm 57. Or download Psalm 57. I'm going to read uh, just a few verses, the first five verses of Psalm 57. Psalm 57, just a few verses. Well, you know, I think I'd, we'll do something different today. I'm going to ask Melanie Bias, do you have your Bible open? Melanie? Okay, Melanie went. Yes, sir. Yeah, I have it. Can you read the first five verses of Psalm 57, please? Sure. I'm reading from the New International Version. Good. Have mercy on me, O God. Have mercy on me. For in you my soul takes refuge. I will take refuge in the shadow of your wings until the disaster has passed. I cry out to God Most High, to God who fulfills his purpose for me. He sends from heaven and saves me, rebuking those who hotly pursue me. God sends his love and his faithfulness. I am in the midst of lions. I lie on ravenous beasts, men whose teeth are spears and arrows, whose tongues are sharp swords. Be exalted, O God, above the heavens. Let your glory be over all the earth. It's Psalms 57, 1 through 5. Thank you. Thank you, Melanie. Praise God. Thank you for the word of God. The word. You know, these are wicked and evil times we're living in, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't have to say that. You know that. These are evil times. The Bible says that in the last days, perilous times shall come. Men will be lovers of pleasure and lovers of themselves. And the Bible describes to us that all kinds of adversities will take place and we are living in these days 
And But praise God, Jesus is about to come back soon, and he's going to deliver us from this world system. He's going to rescue the church out of this system. The rapture is going to take place soon, ladies and gentlemen. And so we need to uh, look at the signs of the times and, and, and make sure that we know that we know that we know that we know that we're saved. And when Jesus comes back, when he cracks the skies, when the trumpet sounds and Jesus stands in the sky and cracks the clouds, that we will be caught up to meet him in the air. In order to do that, ladies and gentlemen, you must be born again. You cannot go with Jesus if you join the church. If you uh, put your name on the roll and paid your dues and grabbed a handful of uh, dues cards, no, you must be born born into the kingdom of God. You may say, well, how, Pastor Carter, can I be born again? You must be born by the Spirit, the Spirit of God. John chapter 3, uh, Jesus teaches Nic Nicodemus that uh, you can't learn this in the university. You can't learn this in, in your social group. You can't learn this by hanging out in the synagogue. You can't learn this by taking an online course. You must be born into the kingdom of God. And that which is born of the flesh is born of the, is of the flesh. That which is of the spirit is of the spirit. You must be birthed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Spirit. And to be birthed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Spirit or to be born again or to get, get the salvation, you must confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus Christ and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead. The Bible says that if you will confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that God raised Jesus from the dead, you shall be saved. And then uh, as all hell breaks loose around you, as it's breaking loose around me and breaking loose around this nation, you can be in peace. And you don't have to be afraid, ladies and gentlemen, because you're safe and secure in the arms of Jesus. Melanie just read from Psalm 57, 1 through 5, and I'm going to share that first verse from the King James Version. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. What a marvelous what a marvelous verse. What a marvelous assurance. What a blessed assurance that we can hide ourselves under the shadow of God's wings until these calamities, these difficulties pass us by. And ladies and gentlemen, this coronavirus is just a, just a, 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 a little glimpse of what's coming down the pike. Difficult things are coming, ladies and gentlemen. Difficult things are coming, and, and this coronavirus is just a little glimpse of the things that are going are gonna to happen in this world to people. And so to be born again means that we don't have to worry about coronavirus. You may say, well, Pastor Christ, you don't have any symptoms. You're not coughing. You're not sweating. You don't have a fever. No, praise God, I don't. Praise God, because I am covered by the blood of Jesus, and I'm hidden beneath the shadow of his wings. And I'm claiming Psalm 57, 1. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. You may say, well, Pastor Carter, you haven't tested positive for coronavirus. No, praise God, I have not. Well, I have, you might say. Well, if you have... Trust in the, in the Lord God. Make the Lord your trust. God knows how to deliver. Somebody said he specializes. God specializes, ladies and gentlemen. He's a doctor. He's known as Jehovah Rapha. He's the provider. He's known as Jehovah Jireh. He's the God of peace. He's known as Jehovah Shalom. He's the God of righteousness. He's known as Jehovah Sid Kenu. There is nothing impossible for God. And so, look, take a look at King David. David wasn't even king yet when he wrote this. He was on the way to become king. Uh, Samuel had 
anointed him with oil, but King Saul said, I ain't giving up my throne to this young man, David. I'm not giving up my throne. And Saul put a contract out on David. Not only did he put a contract out on David, but Saul took his army and he pursued after David. Saul was determined that he was going to kill David for himself. So David was on the run, ladies and gentlemen. He was, like somebody said, I'm running for my life. 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 If anybody asks you, what's the matter with me? You can tell them that I'm safe, sanctified, and I'm running for my life. You may say, well, if you're so saved and sanctified, why are you running for your life? Ladies and gentlemen, there are times when we Christians have to use some common sense. We've got to run from our lives. When the government says, don't, don't go out there in the supermarket, don't meet in crowds over 10 or 25. Uh, wear a mask, then you've got to put a mask on. Uh, don't be so bold, so, so Christian, so strong. You can go anywhere. Nothing's going to touch you. You're immune to all these things. Ladies and gentlemen, use some common sense. Wash your hands when you uh, go to the bathroom. Wash your hands. Uh, uh, and if you cough in your hands, wash your hands. Get some sand sanitizer. But look here, don't go crazy with it. I mean, some people, uh, they got bleach. So how you walk in their house now, it smells like bleach. Bleach, 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 bleach. Well, ladies and gentlemen, there are some people, their souls need to smell like bleach. I mean, their hands are clean, their feet are clean, their face is clean, their house is clean, their kitchen is clean, the living room is clean, the TV is clean, the house smells like bleach, but their souls are corrupt. And they're living in sin. They're living in sin and shame. Uh, Same-sex marriage and sodomy and homosexuality and alcohol and drugs and, 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 and this thing called racism. Racism. You can have the bleach, most bleached house in the neighborhood. But if you're a racist, you, if you hate somebody because of their color or you hate somebody because of, of, of their sex or you hate somebody because of their uh, place of employment, you need a good bleaching, and the Holy Ghost is the only bleach that's going to wash those sins whiter than snow. That's why it's so important to know that you know that you know that you know that you're saved and you're washed in the blood of the Lamb. And when you know that you know that you know that you're saved and you've been washed in the blood of the Lamb, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. You know that if, when the coronavirus comes down, the pike, or when the HIV virus comes down the pike, or whatever comes down the pike, whatever it is, you know that you are set free by the blood of Jesus. You are covered. You are hidden under the shadow of God's wings. So don't be afraid, and don't practice sin. Don't hate one another. You can have the purest, cleanest house in the block, but if you hate your neighbor because your neighbor is black, or you hate your neighbor because uh, your neighbor is a woman. Or you hate your neighbor because your neighbor got a job and you don't have a job. Or you hate your neighbor because your neighbor uh, 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 goes to the church and what's happening now and your little old church is struggling. Then you're just as sinful and corrupt as can be. You need to be born again. And then after you're born again, you need to live righteously. You and I, I'm just not just preaching to you, I'm preaching to myself. We've got to make sure that we stay clean, that we stay in the presence of God. That is why as, as you uh, 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 pastors out there today are going online for the first time, and, and you, there are going to be glitches in your equipment, glitches in your presentation. Uh, the, your, your conference service is going to be overwhelmed with the number of people using their services. So you've got to be patient with them. Give them time to work out some wrinkles. But at the same time, don't be so uh, concerned about your ministry. And whether they, some of you are afraid you're going to lose members. Some of you are, going to, are afraid you're going to lose that dollar, that money, those offerings. Forget about the offerings, pastors. Forget about the money. Some of you are so greedy about money that you can't win a soul. Minister the love of Jesus Christ to the people. As you do online ministry, learn how to talk to them. 
Learn how to listen to the Holy Spirit. Learn how to let the Spirit lead you. Learn when to pray. Learn what to say and what not to say. And learn how to minister to people. I see you, Chuck Thompson, out there in Ardmore, Pennsylvania. God bless you. Learn how to love people just as they are. Praise God. Learn, ladies and gentlemen, and God will bless you. And so it's not all about money. It is not all about money. It's all about trusting in the Lord so that people can be able to stand in these evil days. Ladies and gentlemen, uh, when you turn on the news today, all you hear is coronavirus, coronavirus. And so, and so the media, what the media has done, the media is competing with one another to see who can uh, spin the best story. And so all you see on the news today is coronavirus, 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 and everybody's trying to compete with one another to have the best stories about the coronavirus that people have taken their eyes off Jesus. And church, you cannot take your eyes off Jesus. Keep your eyes on the Lord. Satan's purpose. Satan's purpose. Somebody please mute your phones. I don't want to hear your conversations, your phone conversations. Mute your own phone. Star six. Star six. We are recording. We are recording. Uh, so the whole purpose, Satan's whole purpose is to use the coronavirus to instill fear in the hearts of people. Then fear leads to paralysis. And when you paralyze a whole nation, then God it will have a hard time getting through the people. So keep your eyes on Jesus, not on, not on this coronavirus. Put your eyes on Jesus and keep your eyes on Jesus. Praise God. And the Lord will bless you. He will bless you mightily. He will bless you with, with all of heaven, and he will support you, and God will strengthen you. He will heal you. Okay, so in times like these, uh, if, if all you're hearing on the news is coronavirus, then turn your TV off. If all your friends are texting about the coronavirus, coronavirus turn, uh, turn, turn, uh, turn your text messaging service off. Uh, if all you see on Facebook is something about the coronavirus, then, then take your attention off that. And this is a good, like I said at the top of the service, all this is good because the scripture says all things work together for good to them that love the Lord and are the called according to his purpose. God has a plan in all this. Would you believe that God can use a, 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 an, an epidemic to bring people to their knees? Many people need humbling. Many of you pastors need humbling. I need to be humble. And, and, and it's a great time to, to humble ourselves before the mighty God. Start reading the scriptures. And, and one thing, one thing, this coronavirus is teaching a lot of people how to read that scripture. I mean, so many people have been so dependent on, Pastor, give me a word, give me a scripture. And, and our Bibles have gotten dusty. Blow the dust off your Bible and read the word. Read what David said. In the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge. The Bible teaches us where to go in times of trouble. The Bible promises us. In the time of trouble, he will hide me. Psalm 91 uh, tells us, He that dwells in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say unto the Lord, You are my fortress, my refuge, and you will I trust. And so run to Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Run to Jesus. Don't run to your pastor. Now, a lot of pastors are realizing today that uh, 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 they need Jesus. Not the congregation, and 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 some of you, and and you church members, some of you don't know what to do now. You can't go to church because church is your religion. I'm going to say this again: your religion is church. Going to church is your religion. You've been going to church for 30 years. You have not missed a Sunday in 30 years. You you have to be in a certain seat every Sunday this time. Your religion is church. Now God is saying, no, no, no. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. 
seek ye the Lord. And so some of you are going to have to make some adjustments in your lifestyle. You can't get to church. And you can't worship your church. You can't worship your choir. You can't worship and adore your pastor. Now you've got to learn how to worship the Lord. The Lord is bigger than the church. Jesus said, on this rock, I'll build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. Jesus is greater than the church. We are birthed into the kingdom of God by the Holy Spirit so that we can worship God. And so a lot of you out there who have made the church your God, and, and you've got to be there. Some of you are so confused right now, you don't know what to do. I don't know what I'm going to do. I can't go to church. I can't have church. I can't do church. Well, ladies and gentlemen, we've got to stop this stupid thinking. Do church. Have church. And, and a lot of you think that having church is clap your hands while the choir is singing, and the choir is making you happy, and the deacon's going to to pray his little cute little prayer. He ain't going to get on his knees. He's going to pray his cute little prayer, use some long words, and then the pastor's going to come up and read his manuscript where he's taken time with his thesaurus and his dictionary, and he's gotten some nice flowery words, flowery, flowery words to tickle your innards and make you feel good. Now, a lot of pastors are going to have to learn how to cry out to Jesus and get filled and baptized with the Holy Ghost. And a lot of pastors are going to have to start letting the Holy Ghost do the preaching. Come on, somebody. And then after this coronavirus is all over, a lot of pastors are going to have to go before the congregation and teach about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, something they've been fighting for years. So God knows what he's doing. And then and then uh, after this coronavirus thing is over, a lot of church members are going to realize that it's not about going to church on Sunday because a lot of you go to church on Sunday and 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 you say you say if I can just get to church on Sunday I'll be all right if I can just in the same time you're smoking your cigars and you 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 you're snorting your cocaine or you're drinking your 40 or you're chugging from your old crow bottle of old crow or your homemade wine or that white lightning that a grandpa taught you how to how to how to make, or you're uh, 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 still uh, uh, trying to scheme on how you can hit on your your neighbor's wife or your neighbor's husband or your neighbor, uh, and 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 how you can get over how you can hide that sin you've been doing all week long. If I just get to church, and so church is not the answer. So churches are closed down. Now you can't do church. Now you can't have church. Now you don't have to depend on somebody to sing to you because they're not singing. Now you can't depend on somebody to, to do for you what you should have been doing for yourself. Now God's got many of you in a position where you've got to read the Bible for yourself. Now God's got you in a position where you, you have to learn how to pray for yourself. And, and you can't uh, just call somebody or get on Facebook and say, pray for me, or, or, or start a prayer chain. I see a lot of people uh, uh, um, making viral prayer chains, but no prayers, just a chain. God knows how to humble people. And this coronavirus, ladies and gentlemen, is just the beginning, the beginning of things. And a lot of you can't handle this thing. What are you going to do when worse things, more evil things come down the road? Because they are. And here's another thing God put on my heart to tell you. After this coronavirus is over, and God's going to bring a quick halt to it, ladies and gentlemen. God promised me last night he's going to bring a quick halt to the spread of the coronavirus. In just a matter of days, he's going to bring a quick halt to the coronavirus. But God wants to know, after it's all over, Will you still worship me desperately like you did when the virus hit? Or are you going to go back to the same old, same old, living the same old lifestyle, still drinking your liquor, still smoking your dope, still lying, still hating, still finger pointing, still twisting the truth, still being racist? Are you going to go back to the same old, same old, or are you going to give God the glory and live holy and righteous unto him? That's going to be the test, ladies and gentlemen. Because after this coronavirus test, there are more tests coming down the line. And so 
I want to share with you the message, don't be afraid, God says. Christians, don't be afraid. Let me give you some scriptures. Let me give you some, some scriptures, then we'll close out, and then we'll have prayer. Psalm 42.1 says, As the deer panteth for the water brooks, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. Ladies and gentlemen, imagine you're a deer. You're panting for some water. There's a stream somewhere, and the deer is running, trying to get some water. And, and the Bible says, as the deer panteth for the water brook, so panteth my soul after thee, O God. The songwriter took that passage and said, as the deer panteth for the water, so my soul longeth after thee. You alone are the real joy giver, and my so long for thee. Psalm 46, 1 says, God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. God wants you to give him all the attention. He is our strong tower. He is our rock. He is our salvation. No matter what comes against us, we don't have to be afraid. He's our very present help in trouble. David wrote in Psalm 56, 3, what time I am afraid, I will trust in thee. And he wrote that at the time when Saul was chasing him through the wilderness. He wrote Psalm 56 and 57. Saul was after him, and David even had to go over into the enemy's camp and humble himself and become a soldier in the Philistine army in order to survive. And David, uh, in order to survive, and they knew that David was the one who killed their great giant, the Philistine giant Goliath. And, and uh, David went, and David faked like he was crazy, pretended he was crazy. He was foaming at the mouth, spit running down his beard. He acted crazy. He was clawing at the walls with his fingers. And the Philistine says, is this David who killed Goliath? And they gave David, because David pretended he was crazy. They gave David rest and protection from evil, wicked King Saul. And so God knows how to protect you and me from the coronavirus or from anything else if we put our trust in him. Psalm 62, 1 and 2 says, Truly my soul waiteth upon God. From him cometh my salvation. He only is my rock and my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. Do you see it, ladies and gentlemen? The answer is not to run the church. The answer is not to have church. The answer is not to do church. The answer is Jesus Christ, having a relationship with Jesus Christ, that even if all the churches are forced to shut down, you do not lose your connection with the Lord God. Praise God for this online church and online churches and the underground church. If we have to go underground in the future, God will show us a way that we can connect. It is not about church. It is not about how beautiful your tapestry is, your stained glass windows, those beautiful pews, all the money you've spent in building that sanctuary. Some of you, your God is your church. But God is not the church, ladies and gentlemen. The church is you and me who have Christ Jesus living inside of us. And we really don't need a building. Wherever two of us assemble, we can assemble on a street corner, under a tree, in the park. We can assemble uh, 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 anywhere. Wherever two or more are gathered, God said, there I am in the midst of them. And then 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Ladies and gentlemen, you and I, we don't have to be afraid of the coronavirus or any other virus. We don't have to panic. We don't have to uh, run uh, 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 scared like people are doing all over this country. The church should not be afraid. The born again, the blood washed, the Holy Ghost filled, uh, washed in the blood believers, we do not have to be afraid because 2 Timothy 1, 7 says, For God hath not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and of love 
and of a sound mind. We're going to be finishing up in a few minutes. I want you to review this uh, recording and review these scriptures and, and be blessed. Jeremiah, I'm sorry, Isaiah says in Isaiah 26, 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts thee. Keep your mind on Jesus, not on CNN, not on Fox News, not on uh, the talk shows, not on what Facebook is saying. Keep your mind, not, not Facebook, not on what your friends on Facebook are saying. Keep your mind on Christ Jesus. And the Bible says he will keep you in perfect peace. Well, we could go on and on and on. But I want to share this one because this hits home where many of us are uh, uh, under uh, social limitations. We can't socialize. We cannot assemble in our buildings. Uh, many communities are shut down. Uh, travel is restricted. And listen to this, Isaiah 26, verse 20. Come, my people. Enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment, until the indignation be overpassed. Let me read this again. Isaiah 26, 20. Read it for yourself later on. Come, my people, enter thou into thy chambers, and shut thy doors about thee. Hide thyself, as it were, for a little moment until the indignation be overpassed. That's Isaiah's way, Melody, of saying what you read in that first verse of chapter 57 of the Psalms. Be merciful unto me, O God. Be merciful unto me, for my soul trusteth in thee. Yea, in the shadow of thy wings will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed. Hide yourself, ladies and gentlemen, in the shadow of God's wings unto these calamities be passed. Somebody says, see these heavy burdens? They won't last. God's going to make a way. Turn our midnights into day. Satan had me bound. I felt like giving up. Something deep inside of me. Help me keep going on. We used to sing that in my first pastor, my first church, Chester, Pennsylvania. See those heavy burdens. They won't last. They won't last. God is going to make a way. Turn my midnights into day. Satan had me bound. I felt like giving up, giving up for something deep inside of me. Makes me keep going on. Oh, see those heavy burdens. They won't last. They won't last. Ladies and gentlemen, when you learn how to sing to yourself and encourage yourself in the Lord, like David said, David said, what time I am in trouble, I will trust in the Lord. King David taught us in the Psalms how to encourage ourselves in the Lord. I woke up yesterday. And my heart was not on the coronavirus. My heart was on Jesus. And uh, God gave me this song that I heard a long time ago. And I could picture the slaves running away from slavery in the south, trying to make it to the north, trying to make it to the north. A song of the slaves escaping the calamities, the destruction, the, the troubles, the trials, okay, um, all about Encourage my soul, I must journey on, for the night is gone, the morning light appears. Encourage my soul, I must journey on, for the night is gone, the morning light appears. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Look while this coronavirus passes over, ladies and gentlemen. 
God's going to pass it over because you're hiding in the shadow of his wings. Encourage my soul. I must journey Oh, Don't quit. Don't panic. Don't give up. Don't give up. Don't be paralyzed. You've got work to do. Rise up, church. Rise up, church. Wake up, preacher. Wake up, believer. You've got work to do. We've got a God to glorify. Encourage my soul. I must journey on, for the night is gone. The morning light appears. The storm is passing over. Ryan, the storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. Hey, Karen. Hey, Melanie. Oh, the storm is passing over. Storm is passing over. The storm is passing over. Hallelujah. You must encourage one another, ladies and gentlemen. Encourage one another. Don't give up. Don't quit. God is on the throne. He has not abdicated. He's not given over his authority to the enemy. Greater is he in us than he that's in the world. Call on me, God said. Call on me. I will show you great and mighty things. I will keep you in perfect peace as your mind is stayed on me. Turn your hearts to Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. If you're not saved, you can be saved today. Ask the Lord Jesus to come into your heart. Repent of your sins. Commit your ways unto the Lord Jesus Christ, and he will encourage you. He will comfort you. He will strengthen you. He will heal you. He'll deliver you. If you've been tested positive for coronavirus, you call upon the name of the Lord. No weapon formed against you shall prosper. He is the healer. I want to lay hands on you right now in the name of Jesus. If you have been t tested positive for coronavirus in the name of Jesus, if you've got sickness in your body, I lay my hands on you right now in the name of Jesus. Because the Lord Jesus said, we shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. In the name of Jesus, I rebuke that infir infirmity, that spirit of infirmity, that sickness. I command that you be healed in the name of Jesus. We cast out every unclean spirit by the authority of the name and blood of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. In Jesus' name, praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! Fired up. Fired up, fired up, just like the cheerleaders said when my youngest daughter was a cheerleader for the Chester High Cheerleading Squad. They had a cheer called, get fired up, get fired up, get fired up, get fired up. That's the cheer they cheered when Kobe Bryant played for Laura Marion, and Laura Marion played against Chester, Chuck. That's the, they were cheering, and, and it didn't work. Only thing, the cheer didn't work for Chester. It worked for Laura Marion. Get fired up. Get fired up, get fired up, get fired up. Yes, get fired up in Jesus, ladies and gentlemen. Get filled with the Holy Ghost. Yeah, people will think you're crazy because you're going around. Um, and he's talking about Jesus, man. He, he's running, dancing, praising God, uh, just dancing in the living room. He's all, but hey, that dancing, that praise God keeps that coronavirus off your back. Amen. Keep that bad boy off you. Keeps the enemy from touching you. David said, in the shadow of thy wings. Will I make my refuge until these calamities be overpassed? I'm going to stay under the shadow of your wings, Lord, until these calamities pass, until the storm passes over. And after the storm passes over, Lord God, I'm going to continue walking with you. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. My heart is fixed. David said, my heart is fixed in Psalm 57, 7. My heart is fixed, O God. My heart is fixed. I will sing and give praise. I won't turn back. I won't turn back. And when God delivers you, don't turn back. Don't turn back. There's no other name under heaven whereby we can be saved. Stick with Jesus. Stick with Jesus. Deliverance is coming to your household. Deliverance is coming to the nation. Let us trust in the Lord. Pastors, deliverance is coming. Tell your congregation, 
Wait on the Lord. Be of good courage. He shall strengthen your heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise God. This is Pastor Leroy Carter. We're going to close uh, the recording right now, but I want those of you who can to stay on, and if there is a special prayer you need or, or encouragement or any questions or comments, please uh, stay on and ask those questions. Uh, if you're listening to the recording or you have a need to contact me, contact me. It's my, my email address is LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com, LeroyCarter69 at Yahoo.com, or hit me up on Facebook or my YouTube, YouTube slash Leroy Carter, or check out our website. See what's happening in this powerful, life-changing ministry. Praise God, www.backtobasicsministriesinc.com. Praise God. And tell your friends, hey, I tuned into Back to Basics Ministries on Sunday. And you know what? Tell your friends this. Make sure you tell your friends, Chuck. Guess what? They didn't even ask for any money. God bless y'all. Love y'all. <laughs> I see you, Chuck Thompson, laughing. I see you laughing. They didn't even ask for a dollar. Hallelujah.